this week on Q&A. Our guest is former talk show host Phil Donahue. He's the co-director and executive producer of a new documentary called Body of War. Video at 35 minutes into this program may be disturbing. Phil Donahue, where did you get the title Body of War for your documentary? Well, that was mine. It came to me after watching our own film of this young man. You can see uh, he was sh he's shirtless in one of the uh, scenes. You can see the spot on his head where he wasn't moved in transit. So literally the hair roots died because he never was, you know, moved. There's a little on the back. And you can see the laminectomy. He's a T4. So the bullet came through here right between the shoulder blades. And he is paralyzed from the nipples down. Where'd you find him and who is he? Thomas Young is a honorably discharged 1st Cavalry United States Army Specialist, signed up 913. And he, he was at Fort Hood in basic when the light bulb went on for him. Why am I, why am I going to Iraq, he said to himself. I, I want to go to Afghanistan. He saw the president on the pile getting the evildoers, and he wanted to help them. Anyway, it's too late now. He goes. He's there five days, and he gets whacked from above while he's in the back of a truck, no top, going through Sadr City. And uh, our film shows him trying to rise from the ashes. A life-altering injury alters not only him, but the lives of the whole family. And Brian... I don't have to tell you, this is the drama that is taking place behind the closed doors of thousands of homes across this country, homes occupied by very brave, patriotic people who went to Iraq, who answered the call of their commander-in-chief, and have come home with, uh, Thomas has bowel and bladder, he's sick every morning, he throws up, his pills have pills. I mean, the closer you, he can't cough because he can't move his stomach muscles. He has erectile dysfunction, 27 years old, prime of life. I mean, what's, what's a sacrifice to you? And the American people, by and large, do not see this. And this is just one story. There's 30,000 of these, 30,000. Thomas Young, who else is there? Who are the main characters? The, the uh, young lady that you, no, not the, no, his mother. His mother. Who is his mother? Her, his mother is Kathy Smith, um, and also he has a wonderful stepfather who, by the way, is a ditto head. Thomas's stepfather listens to Rush Limbaugh. We have a f Heartland family, Kansas City, uh, split. We have a blue and, wa and red family. Uh, Thomas has a younger brother who's in Iraq. Imagine. And Thomas is a warrior turned anti-warrior. The other star of the film is his mother from this family, Kathy. She loomed over her son at Walter Reed. I mean, the checking the temperature and the, how many blankets he had. And, uh, and uh, she's really been probably his most important emotional support. What about Bree? Who's Bree? Bree is Thomas's wife. Bree, uh, I went to the wedding. We filmed the wedding. And the wedding is part of the documentary Body of War. Here it is on the screen. With this ring, I be wed. What year did they get married? That would have been, uh, I'd be three years ago later this year, if I remember. I think it was, it was an August wedding. <laughs> We've been filming now. We've been preparing this film now for three years. So I'm saying this is about two and a half years ago. Can you remember the first moment you thought you wanted to do this? Yes, indeed. I went to Walter Reed Army Medical Center, having been invited to accompany Ralph Nader. I was talking with Ralph after the 04 election, and he said, a mother at Walter Reed wants to see me. Do you want to go? Off we go. And I stood next to this bed. I looked down at this kid. He was wall-to-wall wall -wall morphine. He's just, he was really out of it. And he was thin, and it, you could see his cheekbones. And I learned of the gravity of his injury, that he was paralyzed from the chest down. And I just, you know, I thought, 
more people should see this. And I appointed myself to try and do that. And here I am, uh, three years later, talking to Brian Lamb on C-SPAN. <laughs> it's been quite a ride. What did it cost you? A lot of money. <laughs> it isn't, this is not for sissies. Um, I don't feel comfortable revealing what I've spent on the film. Can you give us a range? Less than a million? No. Less than two million. <coughs> um, you know, the problem with that is, is um, I don't want to appear to be uh, pandering to anybody. By the way, prof no profits will accrue to me. I don't consider that a terribly virtuous thing. I mean, how could anybody make a dime on this young man's life? I mean, he can't walk. Um, did you pay for it yourself? I did, yes. I funded the film. Let's watch some more of it. Uh, this is, you've got Cindy Sheehan in this. Is she an important part of this? Well, Cindy was the spokesman for Kathy Smith, Thomas's mother. Cindy lost her son. Kathy Smith's son came home. Imagine, Kathy Smith feels lucky. She's got her son. And she, she admired Cindy, and she felt Cindy spoke for her. Let's watch. I've got meetings, I guess. I'm a busy man. We're coming, we're coming. I'd also want to introduce Thomas Young. He was fighting in Sauter City and wounded the same day Casey was killed, and he was part of the first cavalry, too. I uh, also would like to demand a meeting with the president because I feel he owes me some explanations as to why a soldier can volunteer to go over and fight for his country and lose his ability to walk, plus a lot of other uh, important functions, and why I am not uh, worth uh, the funding for stem cell research. Sorry, but we're going to have to uh, cut the short. I'm going to go find a table to lean on for support. So are we good here? Thanks. Thank you. We've learned that Iraq has trained al-Qaeda members in bomb-making. Saddam Hussein's regime trained al-Qaeda operatives in bomb-making. Saddam is now training al-Qaeda in bomb-making. We know that Iraq and al-Qaeda have had high-level contacts that go back a decade. Senior-level contacts between Iraq and al-Qaeda going back a decade. The Iraqi regime has been in contact with al-Qaeda for at least a decade. Saddam Hussein is harboring terrorists. Harbors these terrorists aid comfort and sanctuary to terrorists. We know that Iraq and the Al-Qaeda terrorist ne network share a common enemy, the United States of America. 